Hello fellow option traders. This is Jeff, sometimes known as the option guru on some days and on other days. I don't want to even really attach guru to the end of my name, but today we're making this as the option guru. We're going to look at spreads for earnings and whether or not uh, you can play both sides or if you have to pick a direction. And as it turns out, we're going to prove here, at least to my satisfaction, that on an earnings play, you can't pick both directions. You're going to have to pick one direction or the other. So for my example here, I have Apple. Now we're going to look back on this date here for this earnings announcement. And you can see that as it pops up here, whenever it decides that it's going to pop up, it's going to say that they actually beat the numbers. Come on. Uh, let me move back here just a little bit. They actually beat on their earnings. It's not coming up here. Oh, there. There we go. Okay. So um, their estimate was $14 and almost four cents. And they came in at $14.05. And uh, I'm not, don't remember exactly what the details were there, but um, I believe that apparently either these numbers disappointed or their forecast disappointed, something disappointed, and it made kind of a big move down and stayed down for a few days and then clawed its way back up to the price that it was before earnings and then you know wiggled around for a while so we're all pretty familiar with Apple so far so they have an earnings coming up next week and the question is can you play both sides of this with calendars or credit spreads or whatever and and still come out making some money and as it turns out, at least using the tools that Thinkorswim has given us, um, you have to pick a direction and just go with it and risk it. And the direction that you pick has to be, I guess you might say, worth the risk. So in some cases, like, you know, calendars, as an example, you can risk, you know, say like 300 bucks or whatever, and you could make a lot of money. Or you could, um, with a credit spread, you could go at the money and do a one-to-one -one risk reward, and you know, risk 250 to make 250, and if you lose, you lose 250. That's in many cases, that's probably about the easiest way to go. But the nice thing about calendars, and here's here's what I'm saying, is the nice thing about calendars, if you pick the right direction, you still have that long option. Uh, out there to play with which is sort of similar to what I currently have going on with Google although the Goog and the Goog L have messed me up and I'm still trying to figure out what's going on there but let's take a look at Apple because we're not expecting anything weird to happen with Apple all right so uh, 423 is their earnings date so if we go jump over here and look at um, the option chain, so their earnings are going to be this week. So we're looking at 36 for an IV overall for that particular week and then 31 for the week after and then continues to go down quite a bit, uh, down actually down to 21 for the May 5 expiration and 22 for this July expiration. So, uh, you know, if you pick a direction and it works for you, then you would still have on a calendar, you would have that long option to play with. But right now we're not getting any sort of market maker move yet. We won't get that, I don't think, until next week, I think. I'm not sure why it's not there right now. Let's go to the trade tab and see if there's anything there. No. But what we can do is we can look at this number right here. So that's the number that we are going to 
use if we do a earnings play on Apple for next week but we're talking about let's look into the past and see what we can come up with from uh, the previous earnings so I did this in both uh, on demand up here and I also did it using think back and I came up with similar results so since think back is a lot faster that's what we're going to go with for right now so I'll click on think back and we will go to uh, the 24th which is the Friday before earnings let's take a look at this calendar here earnings are on the 27th after the market closes so we'll be looking at our data on the 28th 29th 30th and 31st to see what happens here but on the 24th this is what we're looking at so the first thing that we will want to do is try to figure out we want to put our calendars at the expected move so let's find out what the expected move was back then and we're at 546 so if we go ahead and buy a straddle at 546 we'll see that it's uh, actually 31 dollars for this which would be three thousand and ten dollars if you were to buy this and uh, we're still looking at a profit and loss date here of the 24th our trade date is up here on the 24th so here's our straddle there's our spread that so that's where we're going to place our calendars so the next thing we'll do is we'll buy a calendar and we want it uh, 30 away from this 545 so uh, on the plus side 545 plus 30 is 575 is that correct that's correct so there it's a dollar 47 for that calendar next we'll do a calendar on the put side with by subtracting 30 from the uh, 545 so we'll do this and we'll go 515 should be where this one is and that's two dollars and 45 cents IV is a little bit higher probably on the put side we're looking at uh, implied the volatility of 47 versus well it's 48 over here I don't know what it is at those strikes so I'm not going to open up the chain that far uh, well, I suppose I could. Let's make it, uh, what, 28 is usually the number that I use. So let's look at this uh, 515 on the put side first. 515 implied is 45.07, and the 575. is 45 so I, I guess that's not the difference maybe we're looking at the next month out that's probably it because we're not collecting but it's costing us more to buy that put out the next expiration not the next month but the next expiration which is uh, we're looking at 515 that's 40 and 575 is 38 so that's the difference that's why the put side is a little bit more expensive all right uh, now let's do a at the money credit spread trying to get see if we can get a one-to-one -one risk reward so let's sell a vertical here on the call side that's two dollars and fifty cents for so we're looking for a buck twenty five a buck twenty is pretty close and then on the put side we're probably going to have to go up one more strike and that's given us a buck thirty alright so we have just about a one to one risk reward on both of these so now we have our uh, five trades we have the straddle two calendars and two verticals alright so let's go to let's move to Monday this is the day of earnings and these oops I moved the wrong calendar oh dang let's go back here to the 24th sorry about that folks 
All right, now I want to move this one up to Monday. Okay, so where are we at? The straddle is losing. Just about everybody's losing right now in anticipation of earnings, of course. So we'll move one more day. This is these numbers are closing numbers. So at the close of the 28th, which is the day after earnings, the straddle is up $742. That is because their move, looking at this again back here at the chart, their move was beyond the expected move. I mean, the options are priced based on the expected move. So we were looking at a 515, and they actually moved down to here. So that's it moved outside the break evens on the straddle. On the call calendar, we paid a dollar forty seven for it and it's down a dollar thirty six. So in this case we would say, I'm getting out of this baby. I'll save my ten dollars. Um on the other calendar, though, that we paid 245 for is actually up 250. So that's one-to-one um, -one risk reward on that particular uh, trade. And the same thing with our call uh, vertical, our credit spread, that we collected a dollar 24, and here we're going to be able to keep that dollar 20. But on the put side, we're down 155. So uh, this is down a dollar fifty-five that we collected a dollar thirty-four. So if we get out of this right away, then that's another uh, ten bucks too. So actually, you know, if you exit these trades right away, so in conclusion, if you get a move that's outside the expected move, your vertical—I mean, your um, straddle—is going to work out, as shown here. If you um, don't pick a direction with your calendar, you could end up slightly ahead. So um, the net on this trade is a hundred and see so made two fifty, lost one thirty six, so that's like a hundred and fourteen dollars I think you would have made on your calendar if you get out right away that day. So if you do, you know, like, I don't know, 10 of these, say, 10 of these calendars, um, I suppose you can make some money with that. As expected, the credit spreads are a wash, pretty much. Although, if you get out right now, um, I'd have to figure this out. This one out a little bit differently, but it would pretty much end up being a wash. Now, if you wait, we go up another day. Well, look at this one moved even more. Let's go take a look at our chart. What happened here? We went even further out. So that is worth much more now. Here we have uh, collected 1.4, and we can get 1.3 back. So we're still looking at 10 bucks there. Here we're looking at not quite realizing the whole 245, so we'd have to wait on that one. And here, um, uh, let's see, 118, we're almost uh, fully realized on that. We're looking for 120. And this one actually turns out to be a little bit better than the day before. Yeah. Well, now that is very strange. I think that there was an IV collapse that may have played a role in that particular play. And let's go forward one more day to Thursday the 30th. Now we're looking at uh, 1400 bucks here. Uh, here we're um, at a total loss, and here we are up at 142 in, in um, profit. Here we've realized 
everything and we haven't quite lost everything here yet so we'll go to the 31st and here we pretty much have lost everything here we've gained everything and I just had an alert on the queues go off the market must be declining right now my guess um, but this uh, vertical worked out quite well so you know um, I mean the straddle worked out quite well so let's see in conclusion if you can afford a straddle and it moves outside the expected move then that's going to pay off uh, but really what happens here I think um, if you were to do like a combination of all of these like I did here or if you did a bunch of calendars I think that you could probably make out by doing a double calendar at the expected move especially if it makes the expected move that's when it would be very profitable okay I think that's it um, you can go ahead and do this yourself this is a good way to do it yeah I had to answer that phone alright so this is where we're at um, so, let me add these up. I figure out here what's better if we got out on the 28th. Oh no, it's much better if we get out on the 29th. If it takes another move to the negative side for the straddle. Yeah. Some of them are better right away. Some are better to wait and see how much if it continues in the direction especially with the straddle okay um, you know versus just buying a call and a put at the money let's try that here's our trade date let's try that at the money uh, let's see that'd be five let's just do let's do um, by a put here and a call here and let's go to the 28th whoa so this is this is fourteen hundred dollars for this one it's so that's twenty eight hundred dollars that you would have invested and you would end up uh, up by about nine hundred dollars total so you could do that too probably not really that risky to buy a put and a call at that time and that would be the week of earnings so you could do that too what else could we do we could do I mean there's all sorts of weird things uh, we could do um, We could do a back ratio, or we could do a strangle, uh, butterflies. Uh, you wouldn't want to do an iron condor, I don't think. Um, so, anyway, um, these are some ideas for earnings plays that you could do. And, well, that's... Uh, get rid of this one right away take your lumps on that and hang on to the one that went in your direction so that's another play that you could do if you want to risk the capital I, you know the thing is it comes down to is um, you don't have a lot of time decay I think if you did your trade actually on Monday Let's, uh, let's try that with the call and the put. Let's go to a trade date of Monday. Okay, and we will do, well, I need 10 here. <clears throat> Excuse me, let's do our call here and our put here. 
All right, and let's jump up a day. Yeah, I think that um, that's well worth. I think that's probably the best earnings play that you could do is just buying a call and buying a put. And this is, you know, 60, 16, um, $3,200 or $3,400 or $3,400, somewhere around there, and you would do you would do just fine, because here you would end up almost like $1,500 ahead, and then get rid of this one and wait another day, and pick up another 500 bucks, wait another day and pick up another hundred. That's just for that particular date. Let's go look at another earnings on Apple for that's looking like the best play. Um, let's take a look at another earnings date here. Nothing really happened here. Isn't that interesting? So this is 1028. So let's go to 1027 of last year for our trade date. Oh, we can't go to 1020. Okay, we'll go to 1028. All right, and we will buy a put and a call. Buy and buy. Oh, that's pretty expensive. Are we going to get anything out of that? Uh, no, that was a loser. We didn't get any movement on that. A straddle would have been a total loser, too. So we got no movement on that particular earning state. How about the one before that? Here. Uh, let's see here. 723. Let's go to 723. Open up this chain and buy and buy and move up a day. I would have made three hundred dollars on that one. Yeah, you would have wanted to get rid of that one. It's probably the best thing to do is to get out that day. All right, what's the earnings date before that? Let's see here. Four twenty-three. Come on. Okay. Buy and buy. Move up a day. definitely hurt. Does waiting longer help on that one? That's a big loss. Pretty high risk, I would say. There is no easy answer. There just isn't. So is there an earnings play? I still say, I still say you have to pick direction. I think that that's the conclusion that we have to make out of this. You have to pick a direction and by limiting your risk and maximizing your gain. So if you think it's going to go down, then buy a call or buy a put. If you think it's going to go up, then buy a call or calendar at the expected move or I don't think that a straddle is going to work out very often. I don't think. Here we're still at the 23rd. Uh, 406 is our price, so let's buy a straddle here. And we'll see, because it didn't move very much, so we know that. Yeah, this would have been a big loser. That's almost a total loss. So if we don't get the movement, you have to pick direction.
you just have to pick the direction. So here, let's just take a look at this 405. Let's put that straddle back up there again. Come on. Okay, so again, it's 30. And we're looking at a $30 move on Apple on 423. And it just, it does not do it. It doesn't do it. It's not giving us the move that we need. This is, come on. This is 423 and this is the day after earnings. Now we're looking at closed numbers, but we don't, there's no way that there's a $30 move here. So it did not meet expectations. So the straddle, the break-evens would have been $30 up and $30 down, and that would have hurt. All right. There's a lot of thinking out loud here without much planning or laying out exactly what I was going to do in this video. And, you know, in conclusion, you pick your direction and you don't risk money like this. Or you don't risk money, you know, by buying a straight call and a straight put. I think, I still think the best thing to do is to do a calendar at the expected move. And uh, if you want to, you can push the long uh, back month out if you want. Uh, just to keep it from losing its value too much. Because the... Um, Implied volatility will um, won't change that much after earnings for the back month, so you won't lose that much on that particular trade. As an example, we have a thirty dollar move here from four ten. So if we were to go on the put side and do a calendar at three eighty. And then let's do, can I just duplicate this trade? Yes. Okay, so I have one here with a back month of April 4th, and or May, I'm sorry, May 13th. Let's move this out to June, regular expiration. Now you're going to pay more for this one. But let's move up now. All right, so... Um, it moved, this is a put calendar, let me look at this chart, here we are in the 23rd, here we are in the 24th, the closing price is almost exactly what the closing price was the day before. Uh, did they give me the price of the underlying? Nope. So actually, uh, this calendar made a lot more doesn't make any sense to me oh it is at 390 that was not why are we saying at the why are we saying 406 here there's something wrong here let me see if I can figure this out okay this is the beauty of IV collapse on the 23rd the IV on the April 4's look was up here at like 90%. So our short, we collected a lot of money for that short. Let's move the date up to the 24th and look at these Aprils. Now where are we at? Look at this collapse in the IV. So now the one that we sold for so much money, if we were to look at this 390 put, let's go back and take a look at the 390 put on the 23rd. The 390 put was $8.50. Move up a, uh, one more day, the 390 put is now at 50 cents. That's where we made our money over here on these made more money on this one because the back month remained steadier.
as far as IV is concerned. So the May 1, we'll take a look at that one. Let's go back to the 23rd and take a look at the May 1. 390 is at 59% and $9.30. And we'll move up to the next day, May 1, 390 is at $2.20. So there is a big volatility collapse on that, too. Not as big, of course, as the previous week's expiration or earnings week expiration. If we were to take a look at the June, although we pay more for that calendar, On the 23rd, the June 390 was at 35.6%, 35.6%, and here it is at 27.8%. So the collapse in that is not as great, and that is the beauty of calendars at expiration, which means that if you were to even do, let's go back to the 23rd. Sorry for taking up so much time here. I think I'm educating myself as much as uh, anybody else that might be watching this. Let's go back and do a couple of call calendars at the expected move, which is 30. So we're looking at 405 plus the before 35. So let's buy a calendar at 435. Come on. Give me my drop down here, 435. And with a May 1 back month, and then I'm going to Do this again and I'm going to do the June. Alright, so now this should be interesting. Move up one date. Okay, we lost a little bit here, but we gained so much more here. Oops. I didn't mean to do that. So if we were to, we didn't lose much here. So the deal here would be let's do the front month, the week of expiration and the back month further out, say a month or maybe even two. So this is May, June. So this is almost two months out, a little one week short of two months out. So we end up making 335 on this one and losing 46 on that one. So that's like a $290 gain by playing both sides and it didn't even really move. So I can extrapolate this out into the the um, date. Well, let's not extrapolate it. Just let's spend a little bit more time here, and let's go to um, the 27th. Let's go to January 27th. And see what happens there. January 27th. Okay, um, we're going to do the two calendar thing here. So we're still looking at 550, we'll buy a straddle. We're still looking at, I think, a 30 move. Okay, and so we'll do a count call calendar and we'll duplicate that and we'll make that. Um, make this long side March, January, Feb 1, March, yeah, I think that's far enough out, Let's see what, how much that costs, $845, uh, I might want to go one more month, no, that's too much, I don't want to spend that much money, I'm too, I'm too cheap, I wouldn't do that trade, <laughs> Okay, so we got that. Now, um, we need to do a put calendar. And we want to do that 
30, so that's that would be 520. Come on. It's a little slow today. I don't know if it's my laptop. I'm getting a memory low thing. It's been coming and going. <clears throat> I probably should restart the application, but I'm not going to. So I want this one to be March as well. All right. <clears throat> okay, are you guys ready? Boom. Up comes tomorrow. All right. So... Um, so the one with the, uh, how did it both, okay, both of these are making money. So we're down $600 on this side and up $700 on this side. And that was with a big move, way outside the range. You know, there is no panacea. There is no answer. Um, the guys and gals that figured all this stuff out, the pricing of options and everything else, only if things happen that they don't expect and you happen to pick it right, is the only time that you're going to win. Otherwise, they're going to win. So that means they win most of the time and you win some of the time. But if you limit your losses and maximize your gains, you'll end up ahead. I think that's the conclusion that we have to draw from this. So is there an answer? No. What would I do on Apple for next week? The day of earnings, I would do what I did here with the calendars. I would do a, a calendar, a put and a call calendar at the expected move at that strike. And um, put the back month out of uh, about two months, roughly. Maybe seven weeks, or if you can, do it this seven weeks. That's what I would do. That's what I would do for Apple. Okay, so the promised video on earnings plays is done. I hope you learned something from this and hope you picked up enough to be able to just go out and run some of these scenarios yourself. They're pretty easy. I can do it any time of the day or night. Any time that uh, TD Ameritrade or Thinkorswim is, has their databases available, you can do this. So it's kind of fun to speculate. Just remember to go through here when you're done and delete all your back trades. Otherwise they're going to stay there forever. Okay, so that's it. Thanks a heap for watching. Have a great day, and good luck at earnings.